everybody make some noise in this house. Come on, how many know every praise belongs to our God? Power 
is our God. He is our God. He's champion. He is you just don't serve Muhammad or Buddha. You don't serve a God who's dead. We serve a living and active and mighty God. He's a mighty God. And he's our God. Just begin to say, he's my people. We look to follow people that want to be influenced by us and to influence us. But I'm telling you today, my soul thirsts after God. My soul hungers and thirsts after a winner. One with a proven track record. One who has never lost a battle. The one who's a way maker. The one who's a miracle worker. The one who makes a river in the desert, y'all. He's a good God. He's a great God. And we get to serve him. He's a great God. <laughs> oh, he's a great God.
to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make her boast in the Lord. Because great is the Lord. Great is the Lord.
worship him. Let us worship him. Let us worship him. Let us worship. Let us worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, let's worship God. Come on, come on. Let's worship the Lord. Come on. How great is our God? Come on, come on. How great is our God? Come on, lift it up, lift it up. How great is our God?
to stir up this atmosphere. Stir up your heart. Stir up the God on the inside of you. Stir up the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Stir up the gift on the inside of you. Pray in your heavenly language. Glory! Mighty is God! Mighty is your God! Mighty is your God! Nobody like your God! Nobody nowhere like your God! Nobody can match your God! Nobody can stop your God! Nobody can defeat your God! Nobody can stand up to your God! Mighty is God! I said, mighty is God. I said, mighty is God.
and confident worship. Worship me with all that you have. All that you have. Your very being. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Let go, let go, let go. This is the hour. This is the day. Let go, let go. I'm an all-encompassing God. Let go and let God. An all-encompassing God. Be free, saith the Lord. Be free to worship me. There's freedom in the house, say the Lord. There's freedom in the land. There's freedom in this place, say the Lord. Be free. Be free. Be free. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you, oh God. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence in this place, oh God. We bless your name, Jesus. the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a great, big, resounding praise. Glory. We bless your name, O God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I tell you, there's nothing like being in the presence of God. There's nothing like being amongst the saints of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So how many visitors do we have in the house today? Any first or second time visitors? Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Let's give them a great big warm round of applause. Oh, I see the hand over there. Awesome. Well, we want you guys to know that we are a, an assembly that loves Jesus. We love to serve Jesus. We love to invite his presence in our assembly. And we want you to know that you're always welcome at Jubilee City Church. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. All right. Let's go into our announcements. Amen. You guys forgive my voice. Amen. Well, today we have the young adults cookout and fellowship. Somebody say amen for the young adults. Let me see the hands of all the young adults. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I guess I should have qualified that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, today, following service, there'll be a young adults cookout and fellowship. It will be held at the Bridge House, uh, which is 8300 North Hicks Road, if you don't know. Uh, there'll be food, games, basketball, fellowship before college begins. How many are going back to college? I know there's a few. Amen. Praise God. Okay, I see some hands. So this may be your last chance to fellowship, so we want to make sure that all of our young adults uh, make it out today. If you have any questions, please see Pastor Sherry in the back. Pastor Sherry, if you could raise your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Next, I'd like to have Angel Cook come up for our 
Healthy Living Seminar announcement. Come on, let's give her a hand of applause. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. Of course, love you, Apostle Ellis. Love you, Pastor Maria. And thank you, uh, the Letleys back there. Um, really quickly, so our next seminar, our next one is our grocery shopping tour. So if you came to the actual grocery shopping seminar yesterday, then we had a great time and we're going on the tour on Saturday. If you did not come to the seminar, you will have to catch it the next time around. Because if you didn't come to the seminar, there's way too many things we went over. So you don't want to just show up Saturday to the grocery shopping tour if you weren't there yesterday. However, those that missed, we're doing the whole seven week series over and we're gonna start that in September. More announcements about that later. Thank you everyone. Hallelujah. How many know that if you wanna fulfill your purpose in the kingdom, you gotta be healthy? Sick people can't fulfill their purpose in the kingdom. Therefore, it would behoove us to take advantage of the wisdom and the resource that is within this local body. Hallelujah. Amen. Next is the Summer Blast. Somebody say Summer Blast. Blast. Summer Blast 2022. Hallelujah. So we want you to join us for Summer Blast 2022, which is our annual picnic on Sunday, August 21st at 10 a.m. at Willow Metro Park. Now, the 21st is next week. Next Sunday, right? Today is the 14th, right? right? Next week is the 21st. That means that if you show up here, nobody's going to be here. So you want to show up at Willow Metro Park for Summer Blast 2022. Amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. So there will be a great food, fellowship, and fun, including horseshoes, beanbag toss, bouncy house for kids, water wars. I know the kids love the water wars. Let me, let me hear all of the kids that love the water wars. All right, all right. There'll be board games and card games and swimming, as well as the Eagles Cup Volleyball Tournament. How many want to compete for that, uh, for your name on the, on the trophy this year? Brother Ron said last, year, last week he wasn't going to be there, so he's going to be forfeiting his, his name on the trophy this year. So that means it's up for grabs for anybody who wants it. <laughs> You just won't gonna be there. <laughs> amen, amen. Brother Ryan has been um, basically holding the trophy hostage for the last couple of years. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, also, there is an event. Uh, that that uh, Susan Alexander, is Susan Alexander in the house? Amen. See, Susan Alexander is called Immerse into the Deep, presented by Higher Praise Dance Academy. Now, there are four, um, flyers like this in the foyer. So if you're interested in going, pick up your flyer in the foyer and support Susan Alexander and the awesome creative arts ministry uh, of dance. And there's going to be a lot of things on that program. So I just encourage you uh, and Jubilee encourages you to uh, make yourselves available to that. Hallelujah. Again, that'll be Saturday, August 27th at 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. That's when the workshops will happen. And then 6.30 p.m. will be a concert. It'll be held at God's Oasis Ministries International, which is at 17350 Wellington Avenue in Roseville, Michigan. Uh, the donation is $35, and that includes lunch. So if you have any questions, you can get your flyer in the foyer, but you can also see Susan Alexander. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, next we have the immune power packs. Hallelujah. Now, the immune power packs are to help you 
to rise above all of the worldly nonsense that's going on and will be coming in the days ahead. So all of those um, COVID um, flu virus and all of that stuff, how many know that your God-given immune system is the best line of defense? Man can never do better than God. Let me say that again. Man can never do better than God. But one of the things that we need is the vitamins, the minerals, and the nutrients that would go into the temple and make the temple strong. When you build your immune system, you're able to fight off everything that can come against you, but you got to have a strong immune system. So if we want to honor you, amen. All right, are you ready to give? I said, are you ready to give? I said, are you ready to give? You're not giving to man, you're giving to God. Can you wrap your mind around that, that God gives you the opportunity to sow into his kingdom? I mean, if you really wrap your mind around that, you'll understand that there are eternal ramifications every time you sow a seed into the kingdom. You're helping the kingdom of heaven to progress and advance in the earth. So, is it important to be a tither? Well, absolutely. Is it important to be a giver? Absolutely. Why? Because I get to partner with the emperor and creator of the universe in his work in the earth. So I want to encourage you. Let's begin to partner with our finances by giving to our God, our king, as he advances the kingdom in the earth. You can make all checks payable to Jubilee City Church, or you can get an envelope if you want to give by cash. The other ways of giving electronically are through Cash App, which is dollar sign Jubilee City Church. You can give through the website, which is jubileecity.org, through PaySimple, and that'll give you various categories that you can give to, whether it's tithes, offerings, missions, and so forth, or you can give through tithely. Amen. So, okay. and I'm reminded that if, if um, you're still working on it and, and uh, you don't get a chance to do it during the offering, there is a drop box in the back you can give it to as well. Amen. So I'd like to get everybody to stand to your feet. Hallelujah. How many have your offering ready, your tithe ready? Hallelujah. Come on, let's speak the word over that. I say, let's speak the word over that. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, we give joyously. We give hilariously with full joy because you enable us to partner with you in advancing the kingdom in the earth. So thank you for allowing us to partner with you. Now we declare the blessing of the Lord, the favor of the Lord, the abundance of the Lord, the provision of the Lord, is flowing to us now. We declare breakthrough in finances, wisdom in finances, discipline in finances, multiple streams of income, unexpected money, unexpected blessing, checks in the mail, things that we did not expect. We declare it now. We declare it's coming to us. We declare the blessing of the Lord makes us the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, the lender and 
not the borrower. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you can come from where you are and give, or you can give to the ushers. Whatever you want to do, if you want to pray over it as a family, if you want to bring it up here, if you just want to give it into the baskets, whatever works for you. special guest and Apostle's going to uh, come up now and introduce our special guest. But I just want to encourage everyone that we are training ourselves to not look at the flesh, not look at the vessel, but to look at the treasure inside the vessel. So as Apostle comes up, let's receive him with a warm round of applause. And let me also say... just celebrated a birthday. 71 if I'm not mistaken. Hallelujah. So if anybody wants to give him a Holy Ghost handshake after service, please, you are welcome to do so. Thank you, John. <laughs> I appreciate that. Good morning, saints. And thank you all for all of the birthday cards and texts and messages and shout outs on Facebook. Thank you so much. I'm not one that goes overboard with birthday. Sometimes we can get... Okay. Sometimes when it comes to those kinds of things, we can get in the flesh. Let me be very careful now. The world has this whole thing that's very self-oriented, self-centered, all about me. And we live in a my best life now world. That is not kingdom. Don't make me preach on that. Because you bought that one. And there's a whole ideology around me. What I want. What I feel. Self. Do you really read the Bible? God has nothing good to say about self. We'll leave it at that. Like crucify it. Whoa. That's a novel idea. Crucifying the flesh. So we've got to be very careful. Now, I'm not putting down celebrating birthdays. Of course, we do that. But we can go too far with anything. The Bible says temperance in all things. Amen? So I'm not trying to squelch birthday celebrations. I just want to make sure that we keep a kingdom perspective in every aspect of our lives. Amen? Y'all still love me? <laughs> I want to release all of our children and our teens to Judah Nation and Z Nation. Hey! -oh! All rise. <laughs> Let's praise God for the seed of the righteous as they go out. Let's praise God for them. I said, let's praise God for them. Father, we bless us to see the righteous. We bless our children. We bless our teens. We pray that you perfect the things that concern them as they're being raised up in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation, that they raise up a righteous standard and demonstrate who our king is uh, in the culture. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, their departure creates some seats towards the front, so if you all don't mind moving forward, I'll wait. Ain't nobody moving. I said their departure creates some seats towards the front. If you all can just move forward, thank you very much. We are so honored today to have a two choice vessels. We bill it as Frank Seamster, but he has an anointed woman of God, Naphtali, with who has a word in her mouth and has a grace upon her life. But Frank's been coming to Jubilee for over 35 years. <laughs> I remember in 1984, the year the Tigers won the World Series, we hosted a conference called the Michigan something conference. We had two speakers, and we, were, we had just moved into our building that week. 
We moved into our building Halloween day that year. And the conference started November the 1st that year. And I remember it because I had a team of workers in the building and we were building the stage, the platform, the pulpit as it were, uh, that day for the speaker that night. And these speakers spoke at the conference before I did. My point is, this man spoke on my pulpit before I did. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But the reality is, he bought a word. And he's been coming to our ministry off and on over the years ever since. We've stayed in touch over the years. He has a mantle, a grace. He's a former pastor, but God endowed him with a message for the body. So he and his wife traveled. When he first started coming to us, uh, he wasn't even married. But the Lord has blessed my friend. Hallelujah. And every year, he left a fresh deposit. So our hearts have always been open for him to come whenever he's in this region. He was here last year, and what a word he deposited. It was powerful. So today, I want you to just open up your hearts. I don't know what he's going to preach. I don't tell people what to preach. If I invite them here, they have the Holy Spirit to direct and guide them. Otherwise, I don't invite folks that I don't have the confidence that I'm hearing from God. If you notice, we don't have a whole bunch of speakers here. Because we're developing something different in the House of Jubilee. And I'm very, how do I want to put this, protective over the anointing, the grace, the mantle on this house. Not everybody that can preach good has a word for Jubilee. I know a bunch of great preachers. But there's something unique about an apostolic house that carries a different thrust, mantle, grace. It pierces darkness, breaks the back of the oppressor, releases glory, goes inside of people, and whatever is going on in them, the anointing will destroy those yokes and lift those burdens. This man carries that kind of mantle and grace. We don't honor flesh. We do honor the grace of God. I want to ask you to stand with me. And I want you to put those hands together and give a warm jubilee welcome to Frank and Naphtali Seamster. Welcome them to the house of God. Come on, come on. Welcome them to the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate you. Amen. Let's give him some more praise in here. He is worthy of our praise, right? What a great God. What an awesome God. One songwriter says, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve, right? Brother John exhorted us on that. The, one of the guys that was on the keyboards exhorted us on that earlier. About how great God is and what a mighty God we serve. And how awesome and how powerful and glorious that he is. And it's true, amen? I said it's true. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. What an honor it is for Nathalie and I to be again Amen. in Jubilee. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Aren't you so glad? Not just on Sundays, but every day. Yes. You can have Jubilee. Come on. Amen. Every day you can experience Jubilee because Jubilee is a person, right? What's his name? Come on. Amen. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we thank him and we honor him and we bless him and we give him the glory and the honor and the praise that is due unto him. I think pastor, when he first came up this morning, he said a word and I think it's really a key and it's and the reason that I think it is because it's, it's a word that has just kind of leaped strongly in the, my spirit for the last few months. And he talked about an encounter. Uh, having a God. Uh -oh. Divine encounter. Yes. 
And you know what? You can tell folks that have had a divine encounter. You know how? Like Jacob, they walk differently. You remember Jacob? He'll catch your surf planter. <laughs> and it says that he had a God encounter that lasted until. That's a time word. Until the break-in. <laughs> and he had his name changed from Jacob to Israel. Which means what? A prince with God. A prince with power with God. One who prevails. One who prevails. And the Bible says that from that day on, from that moment on, after that God encounter experience, he walked with a limp. He walked differently. I said you can always tell folk who've had that divine encounter with God. There's just something different about it. <laughs> I said there's just something different about them. Hallelujah. They're filled with love. Come on, help me. I said they're filled with, with love. Woo, hallelujah. They're filled with forgiveness. They're filled with gentleness. They are they are filled with faithfulness because you just cannot come away from encountering God. You remember the wise men there in Matthew chapter 2? You remember the wise men who came to see Jesus? Contradictory to Tradition, there was not three of them. Come on. Right. <laughs> we know that there were, were at least from 50 to 300 because they traveled in caravans. Right. <laughs> and the Bible says when they got to where he was at, when they came to the house that he was at, they didn't just throw their hands up and pray. They had been doing that for two years. <laughs> But it says, when they came to the house where he was at, watch it, they presented unto him their gifts. Most of us, we come to church looking for. Back to me again. Come on, come on. But it says, they presented unto him their gifts, and they gave him gold, which speaks of the deity of God, his divine nature. Remember what else they gave him? Gave him frankincense. And frankincense has a fragrance to it. But you know what? The key to releasing that fragrance is the fire. And the hotter the fire... Oh, help me this morning. I said and the hotter the fire, the stronger the fragrance. I said the hotter the fire. Come on, amen. The stronger the fragrance. <laughs> oh, how, like the three Hebrew children. Come on, amen. In the fiery furnace. Hallelujah. Praise God. But it's, that's that, it's that fire. And the hotter the fire, the greater the aroma. The sweeter the smell. Ooh, hallelujah. And here's what I really love about that. In verse 12 it says... After being in the presence of God, it says they worshiped, they bowed. They bowed. Yeah. In verse 12, it says they then departed by another way. So that says to me this morning, you can never come into the presence of God and leave the, and leave the same way that you came. When you have an encounter, a divine encounter, you can never leave. The same way that you came. Hallelujah. Whew, hallelujah. I wish somebody would just lift your hands up and just worship him right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, 
Lord. Somebody ought to just thank him for the fire. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Listen to me. There was something else that they gave besides the gold and the frankincense. What? You know what the myrrh was used for? The myrrh was used, come on, man. It was a part of the ingredients that made up the embalming fluid. It speaks to death, to self. He that seeks to save his life shall lose it, but he that loses his life for my sake, come on, man. And the kingdom, the same, shall find it. Hallelujah. What a God this morning. I said, what a God this morning. What a God this morning. Oh, we can't help but to praise him. <laughs> we can't. Whatever you may be going through, you cannot help but to lift your hands and, and praise him. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> How... How do you spell the word hell? H-E-L-L. -L. Now watch this. Right in the middle of that word hell is the word L. E-L. Which is a name. Come on, help me. Hallelujah. Which is a name. Come on, man. L. Which is a name for God. El Kabora, come on. El Shaddai, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So what are you saying? Right in the middle of your hell, El is there. Come on, amen. You can just praise him and magnify him and give him glory. Why? I'm having an encounter, a divine encounter with the presence of God. So one more time, just lift your hands up and just thank him. Thank him for all that he is doing. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord. We're encountering you, Lord God. Oh, we thank you this morning, Lord, for that divine encounter in God. Woo! My salvation is coming out of that. My healing is coming out of that. My deliverance is coming out of that. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Oh! we magnify your name, Lord God. How we magnify your name. <laughs> Give you glory and honor. And pray. I'm never going to be the same again. I'm never going to be the same again. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him one more round of praise. One more offering of praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brother. Great job. Great, great worship. Great praise. Great, a drummer. Just a great, great, great job. Hallelujah. Our worship team and our musicians. Awesome. We thank you for the atmosphere. Yeah. And as you well know this morning, brother used the two words a while ago, brother John did. Atmospheres are not by chance. Atmospheres are by choice. I choose. I choose. Come on, amen. I choose. As I said again, we're so excited to be here. And I really believe that the Lord has put a word into my spirit. Not just for us individually this morning, but I really believe corporately. And in some ways, when the Lord began to speak this to me, it kind of sensed and felt a little bit elementary 101. But then God would not release me to go another direction. So I just want to talk this morning about what God has put on my heart for this body and for this church. I believe for us individually, as I said, and corporately. And I want to, I'm going to go over to the book of Timothy in just a moment, but, but I want to remind you of a verse of scripture 
that is used in the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse, in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, it says, As a man thinks in his heart. Let me say that one more time. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Let me read that to you one more time. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So for you and I this morning, the need is to make the connection as believers between the way we think and the way we live. Because the way we think is the way we live. And God has given us his word to prepare your mind for your future. And if we take his word and renew our minds to it, then there will be nothing we ever face in this life that we aren't prepared for. Because the thing about being on this planet is to know God and to walk in the earth with his mindset. And if you will take, you know, the word and bathe your mind in it and start acting on what the world on what the word tells you to do in every situation i promise you this morning you'll find yourself thinking like god thinks in areas in every area that you face uh, and i think that is some it's so important because i've had some folk that have come up and said well you know in the past you know you, you never know what god's going to do i said wait a minute yes you do if you know the word Come on. I said, if you know the word, listen to me. If you know the word, you know exactly what he's going to do. He's already told us. Right? I mean, he, he's told us what's coming. It's, it's written in his word. It's in the word. And if you're not working on your mindset, then you're not working on your life. Because your mind, listen to me, and the way that you think is being played out in your life right now. Because the truth is this morning is you cannot go beyond the level of your thinking. Come on, amen? <laughs> because the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So everything that has to do with your life is centered around your thinking. How you raise your children, your married life, how you live, <sighs> places you go and places you don't go. And the enemy, listen, knows that. So he's going to work daily. He's going to work continually against your mind to, to begin to believe things, to influence your mind in ways of thinking that will move you into the direction that he wants to move you. I mean, how do you know we see that in society today? Come on, amen? How the enemy, listen to me. How the enemy has influenced people's thinking. I mean, they are, folks are almost now insane in their thinking. Come on, right? <laughs> so, so to take our life back, I really believe, and to move to where God wants us to move, we got to realize this morning, is my thinking in line with God's Word? Is it in line with the way God wants me to live? And I'm not, I'm not talking about having a mental ascent this morning. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about feeding your spirit. Listen to me. Feeding your spirit. Renewing your mind. And as I, and as I act on the word, then it begins to change the way I'm thinking. And the longer that I live... 
I said, the longer that I live, the more, the more I see how important it is to guard over my, my thought life. Anybody besides me? And to renew my mind. Come on, amen. Thank God this morning for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for a good mate, hallelujah, that sometimes reminds you. Come on, amen. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So our mindset is important. And we're going to look at that in just a moment. And we're going to see what Paul is saying to us. And we're going to turn in just a few moments to the book of 2 Timothy. But as we're turning there, the Second Timothy. How many of you know we are living in the last of the last days? Come on, right? And our mindset is going to be the thing that's attacked more than any area of our lives. Daniel prophesied about this. He said in Daniel chapter 7, he said verse 35, In the end times, right before Jesus comes, and I believe that's where we are, there is going to be a wearing out of the saints. And it's interesting, that little phrase, wearing out of the saints, in the Hebrew it literally means in the mental arena only. So we've got to realize the greatest attack that's going to come against us is in the area that we think. I mean, we see this today. <laughs> it's already been said a couple of times. We see this in society, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, gosh. I mean, when you look around today that what is going on in our nation and what is going on in our world, I mean... It, it's unreal. I mean, it is absolutely unreal. I mean, why, why does it look like it does? Because the years, I believe, have slowly introduced strong thinking that we did not abort. Amen. We did not stand against with the word. And slowly the enemy has moved a whole group towards an insane type of thinking. I mean, listen, I mean, things that 50 and 60 years ago we would have never accepted, now we are accepted. I'm not talking about just in the world, but even in the church. Are you hearing me? Lifestyles that we once condemned, we now condone. Come on, right? That not long ago we, we would have stood against and said, that's not right. I mean, what, what's happening to America is the enemy has attacked the mind and moved a whole culture into a different direction. And listen, it did not happen overnight. It's been slow. It's been methodical. Come on, amen. And the culture is in rebellion. Can I get a witness? I said the culture is in rebellion against God. I mean, we have a government that, uh, that you know, wants prayer out of school. They want to indoctrinate our children's minds, our grandchildren. My God. with such hideous, horrible, ungodly things today that are being taught in our schools, trying to be taught in our schools. And, 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 and it's just created this rebellion against God. And against the things of God. Now, now they would not agree with that, but their actions show that. How many of you understand this morning? It's not what you say, it's what you do. And it's the way you live. So we have this whole culture this morning that is now shifted to doing what, to, you know, what I want to do. 
Well, it's, it's a mindset. And when the devil attacks, he doesn't show up with a neon sign over, over your head. Come on. It's slow. It's methodical. And then he backs away to see what you will do with it. I mean, you notice there are... They, 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 they are things now on TV that, my God, they would... We would have, who would have ever thought? But you see, that's the world. That, that's what society is doing. It's, it's trying to, and it'll use TV, come on, right? <laughs> it'll, it'll use TV to, to introduce things and, 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 and to get us thinking and to accept things that we used to, to reject. And our thinking is kind of, well, maybe, you know, I need to involve to be relevant with the culture. Well. Everybody else is doing it. See, that, that's how it gets you to start slowly yeah. moving into the wrong way of thinking. So God has given us his word to prepare our minds. Come on, amen. So that what I am doing with my mindset. Am I renewing my mind every day? Am I working on myself every day? Come on, hallelujah. See, that's what we have to continue to do because we are being pressured to conform. I mean, pressured to conform. But the world's way of thinking does not have to be your thinking. Even though every day we're faced with decisions that we have to make, whether we either accept, come on, amen, or reject what the world's trying to give us. And I'm telling you this morning, the closer that we get to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the more we have to guard, come on, hallelujah, our minds, or we'll find ourselves acting and thinking like the world thinks. <laughs> And that's what Paul wrote here in 2 Timothy chapter 3. In 2, chapter, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, look what he says. So he's writing about this time. This time that's happening right now. And in verse 1 he says, This know also, that in the what? Last days. That's an interesting little phrase right there. Because in the Greek, it literally means the furthest out. The furthest out. See, when the church started, it was the start of the last days. But this is talking about the furthest point in time, right before Jesus get ready to come. And I believe that's where we're at. Come on, hallelujah. And he's given us signs, right? He's given us signs that would tell us the time is getting close. Right? Not only that, you can discern on the inside of your heart that things are changing. Are you discerning that? Can you sense that? Can you feel that this morning? That things are changing. Come on, hallelujah. Something is about to happen. See? And so here is Paul. And he's saying at the furthest point of time, perilous times, dangerous times, times hard to deal with, and times hard to bear. See? He said, that's what it's going to look like. This is what it's going to look like. Look what he says in verse 2. For men shall be what? Lovers of their own covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. See, all of that is a way of thinking. Come on, amen? See, not casting those thoughts down with the Word of God. Ungodly thoughts. Sinful thoughts that we don't deal with, that we let stay there. And it starts having an effect on your mind over a period of time. Look what he says in verse 3. Without natural affection. That's love, love for their own children. Truce, break, truce breakers. You know what a truce breaker is, don't you? It's a person, come on, amen. It's a person, you know, that, 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 that it, 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 I, let me say, it. it's not a person of the word. They will say one thing and do another. I'll be there, but then I don't show up. See, he's talking about a mindset here that's in the last day people. He says, false accusers, incontentant, furious, despisers of those that are good. Look what he says in verse 4. Traitors, uh. heady, high-minded, lovers of 
pleasures more than... Well, we see that right now in America, in the church in America. Ch churches in America are emptying out today. Rather stay home and watch football. Well, Rather do something and have some kind of entertainment. I'm telling you. Uh, but Pastor and I, just for a moment, we were talking about it just before church. I believe that one of the greatest, one of the greatest harms of the enemy that happened during the pandemic. I, in our state, the first thing that they closed down was the churches. Yeah. That's the first thing that they closed down in our state was the churches. And I believe this morning, I, I honestly believe that that, 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 it, that that was one of the things that the enemy had in mind because if he could shut down the churches in America, if the enemy could shut down the churches in America, and so we saw a lot of churches shut down and then when they did open back up not as many people were coming back as were there some were saying oh yeah we'll, we'll watch it live streaming and live streaming became such a great thing and people were watching on that and now they're not even watching live streaming but they're still not coming back <laughs> lovers of pleasures more than Lovers of, of God. Oh, God's not in the forefront of their thinking. See, see, it's easy to neglect spiritual things when you don't think right. See, that's what he's doing. He's showing us, come away, man, showing us a picture. See, that is a result of not dealing with our mind. Look what he says, oh, in verse 5. Having a form. Somebody say formula. That's what it is, a formula. That's where we get the word formula. It's from that word form. Having a form of what? Of godliness. I mean, this is, this is, I mean, this is so where we're at today. I see this so much as naturally and I travel throughout our nation and, 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 and in our churches. Churches today have a formula to get people in. But it's not the word and the power of God. So there's a form. There's an outward appearance with no inner substance. It looks real. Come on, help me. It feels like God, but does it have inner substance to produce the acts and the fruit of godliness? It's a form, but denying the power and the word. And it says from such, turn away. We have all kinds of forms. I mean, it's just, it, it is amazing. It is, it is amazing to me today as we travel, you know, and, and, and going to the different places and, the, you know, and, and seeing what God is doing in all the different places. But it is amazing to me. I'm, I, I have to say I'm amazed. A lot of churches that we go into, if you're over 35 or 40, you can't even be on the worship team. My God. And you got to have a certain kind of appearance. <laughs> and by all means today, you know, we, we, have, we have to have the lighting system. <laughs> yes, smoke. <laughs> I didn't say that. Somebody else did. But it's true. It is true. You know. What, darling? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it is in a lot of places today. Everything is black, and and then they turn the lights. I mean, it's a, it's everywhere. But thank God it ain't here this morning. Hallelujah! Nothing here but God. Come on, the true presence of God, the real God. Come on, we don't have a form. Come on, Hallelujah! We got God. <laughs> But they have a form. A form. And, and he says, he says, turn. Turn away. And what Paul is saying here, these last day people are going to be so corrupt in their mindset. They're going to have such a rebellious way of thinking. They are self-centered, full of pride, godless, unclean, unthankful. I mean, doesn't that look like the world today? Come on. And as Christians, we must not allow ourselves to fall into this trap and have our minds influenced by the culture that we live in. Can I get a witness this morning? Come on, right? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
Hey, well, well, what does he say in Romans chapter 12, verse 1? I beseech you therefore, what? By the mercies that you present your as a what? Holy, acceptable one to God. Which is your? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye by the what? Renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, don't conform. I want to say it again this morning. Don't conform your way of thinking to your culture. You don't have to think like the culture thinks. Come on, amen. Be transformed. The Greek word metamorphosis, you know that. It means a complete change about who you are by changing the way you think. I love the living translation of that verse. It literally says, let God change you into a person by changing the way you think. See, if you don't change the way you think, come on, amen, hallelujah, you cannot change the way you live. When we are born again, we get a new spirit. We are made alive unto God. But still, we still have the same mind some of the same addictions and habits before we were saved. That's where the renewing of the mind takes place. You got to renew your mind daily. You got to renew your mind weekly, monthly, yearly for the rest of your life. You got to keep working on your mindset. Wrong thinking, uh, wrong living. And Paul makes it clear here. He says it's a choice. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? So no matter what the culture looks like, I can still be transformed. I don't have to look like everybody else. Come on, amen, hallelujah. I don't have to think like everybody else thinks. He says, be not. Be determined. Come on, hallelujah. I'm going to contend for a right mindset. I'm going to contend for a right way of thinking. I'm going to have a renewed mind. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I don't want to be deceived in these last days. I don't want my way of thinking. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? To deceive me in these last days. I want God. I want to see God move. I want to see revival. I want to see the glory feel the tip. Are you hearing? I'm determined to see that. I'm determined to see that in this season. Come on, hallelujah. 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 How many of you understand this morning your greatest battle is here in the mind? That's why I want his mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let this what? Mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There's an interesting verse of scripture from, I believe it is from Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. Let's turn there. First Peter chapter 1, real quickly. First Peter chapter 1. And let's begin reading in verse 13 of First Peter chapter 1. Listen to what he says. Wherefore, gird up the what? Loins of your mind. <laughs> Be what? Be sober. In other words, don't walk through life like you're drunk. <laughs> Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. And hope to the end for the grace that is what? To be brought into you at the... As obedient children. Come on, turn to your neighbors as he's talking to us now. As obedient children. Not fashion in yourselves. Come on, right? <laughs> in other words, the world's trying to get us to think like the world. But we rebuke that. We reject that way of thinking. We aren't going to fashion our... Come on, amen. We're not going to fashion... We're kingdom folks. We're not going to fashion, come on, ourselves after the world. According to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversations. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am... For I am what? 
And if you call on the Father, verse 17, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning, here in what? Here in fear. But notice again what it says one more time. Gird up the what? Loins of your mind. Now what, that, what he's really doing here, he's using a picture, as you know. Of somebody that is running in a race and they've got, they've got these loose clothing and it's showing them down. And it's slowing them down. And, and, and the idea here is to grab up all those loose pieces of clothing. Tie it up so you can run faster. Get those things loose. Those things that you're thinking about that are not of God. That are dangling around your life. Come on, thoughts that just don't want to leave. Attitudes, come on. He said, gird those things up. Tie them up. In other words, I'm not going to let them run loose in my mind. Come on, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, because he's equating this with a runner, and it weighted them down, you know. And so he's saying, you got to go. It's like, it's like one, of the th one of the things I still love to do. I still love... Though I was here in 1984 for the first time, thanks for reminding me of how young that I am, Pastor. I still love, even today, when I'm at home, Mondays and Wednesdays I go to the gym and I play on a league that is 55 and older. 55 and, and older. <laughs> That's on Mondays and Wednesdays for three hours. And then on Tuesdays and Thursday nights, I play tennis from around 6.30, depending on the weather, from around about, about, about an hour and a half or two hours. We, I, play, I, I, I play tennis. I mean, one of the things that I do, especially when I go to the gym, is I, 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 I take off. I, I, I take off if I got a sweatshirt on, you know, I'll take that thing off. I'll just strip down, you know, and get, get that off. I, I do what the Bible says where it, where it talks about us laying aside every, every weight. All weights aren't sin. Come on, wait a minute. But they get in the way of you running the race. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, help me. So I strip down. Come on, hallelujah. <laughs> that word weight means bulk or superfluous. Something extra, something not needed. So I, re I take that off so my movements are not... Re come on, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And white men can jump. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I lay aside that. See, I lay aside that. And I believe one of the things God is asking us in this hour, not asking us, demanding of us. Yeah. He's no longer asking, He's demanding. We have to lay aside. We, we have to, if we want to see, if, if we want to see the fullness of the glory of God, and I believe with everything within me this morning, we're going to see it. Yeah. Yes. Now, come on, I'm not trying to be pessimistic this morning. I'm not trying to be negative, but I'm just trying to help prepare us. Come on, amen. Oh, when God brings us into that glory that he's promised to bring us in, because if you remember the book of Isaiah says, you know, you know, when, when there's a gross darkness upon the people and a darkness upon the earth arise and what? Shine. Come on, he's talking to the church. He's talking to you for the glory of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. For the glory of the Lord is upon who? It's upon you. Come on, man. There's a glory. There's a glory that I believe God is about. And I, and I believe we're right at that place where he is zeroing in, fine-tuning us. Come on, amen. Turn to somebody and say, I'm making adjustments. Even now. Come on, amen. I'm making adjustments. Hallelujah. Even now. Hallelujah. And he goes on and he says in verse 17, he says, you ought to continue your life here on this planet in the fear of God. In other words, I ought to live my life in honor and respect to God, listening to his word. So you got to gird up the loins of your mind. Listen to me. Deal with those thoughts knocking on the door of your heart. You cannot have a right mind with a wrong thoughts dangling from you. Thoughts that would, that we easily accept. 
That's why he abolishes that word in, in, in Corinthians where he says, pull it down every what? Every what? See, not let in those thoughts of failure. Those thoughts of defeat. Loneliness. I'll never have anybody. Nobody loves you. You're the wrong color. I was born into the wrong family. I'll never succeed. Nothing is going to change. I'm going to die early. I might have a heart attack like mom did. Come on, amen. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All these are things that dangle and he's telling you that you need to. Come on, amen. Not God. Not your pastor. You need to do it. See, you stop allowing them to work in your life. You know, it's like, I mean, listen, nobody wakes up one day and commits adultery. I think I'll sleep with them unless you're insane. No, it's slow, it's methodical. I mean, wouldn't you like to? Well, you know, I'm a little disappointed with my marriage. See, thoughts that just start working, dangling around your mind that you don't deal with. And then slowly, all of a sudden, listen to me. (laughs) Suddenly, the phone rings. Hallelujah. (laughs) Just tell him I can't go. Come on, hallelujah. (laughs) I'm in church. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. I'm getting my thoughts together. I mean, all of a sudden, a little foo-foo comes and gives you some attention and tells you how you, how wonderful you are. And then your wife looks at you and says, you ain't all that. Don't let them lie to you. See, but their thoughts, they start working, come on, amen, on a person. And all of a sudden, they start to think, they start to entertain thoughts that they would not have thought before. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, because we don't recognize he's coming to strike the mind. you got to gird those thoughts. Hallelujah. Don't let them hang loose. you got to engage, disengage yourself from everything that would hinder you. Come on, hallelujah. That's what he's talking about here in 2 Timothy chapter 3. He's talking about the culture that we live in and the mindset. He said, you are the one that's supposed to gather those thoughts. Don't let them run wild. See, I, I am the one who chooses not to conform the world. To conform to the world. But I stand firm on God's word. Come on, amen? Because listen to me, church. Listen to me, if we don't, if we don't, Romans chapter 1 tells us what happens then. If, 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 if we don't watch our minds, if we don't, it will take you to a dark place, a place of destruction. Let me show you what I mean. Go with me to Romans real quickly. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Turn to someone and say, I'm changing the way I live. Because I'm going to start thinking different. Come on, hallelujah. Look what he says in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And is it, as it is written, the just shall what? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. See, they reject the truth. They won't hold to the truth. Because which because that which may be known of God is manifested in them for God had showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without what? 
excuse. What he's saying is, you ought to be able to look around, come on man, and see the goodness of God. And how faithful God is. What's that song that we sing sometime in the church now about the faithfulness of God? How faithful? Yes. God, you are so faithful. You are so faithful. You've been so what? Good to me. Come on, hallelujah. With every breath that I am breathing, I will of the mercy of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am drinking, I will sing all the goodness of God. Has he been good to you? Come on, amen. I said, has he been good to you? Hallelujah. He is a faithful God. Hallelujah. Oh, that I got up this morning. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? That I have breath, hallelujah, shows just how faithful God is morning, this morning is. See, but they just took it for granted. See, that's what we're dealing with here. They took it with for granted. Look what it says in verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their what? In their what? See, they were struck first in their minds. Their foolish heart was darkened. See, Paul is talking about a people here that would not glorify God. And that word means to worship, to honor, to praise, to, to think of God. They knew God, but they would not glorify God. They would not retain Him in their thinking. They would not worship God. They would not give glory unto Him. They didn't recognize His goodness and the blessings on their life. And they stopped glorifying Him. They stopped honoring Him. Stopped retaining Him. And I'm telling you, that looks a lot like some in the church today. Yes. Hallelujah. Thinking is not thinking. T-H-I-N-K-I-N-G is not T-H-A-N-K-I-N-G. To think somebody, you got to open your... Whew, I said to think somebody, you got to open your... I, I can go home with you this afternoon, or you can invite us over, and I can, talking about aroma, I can walk into that house and smell if you really know how to cook collards or not. And I can sit down at your table and I can eat some collards and if my wife is not with me, maybe I'll have some neck bones. Are you here? Oh, Sweet potato, cornbread. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, it makes me hungry too. <laughs> Come on, right? And if I sit there and eat a plate and then take another plate, another helping, and then ask if I can take some home with me. But if I sit there and don't say anything, you don't know. And we just get up and go back into the living room and I leave. You don't know where I enjoyed it or not. But if I start asking, if I start saying, yeah, I think I will have some of that. Yeah, I, I can tell you, I think I will have another helping. Come on. See, I'm not just thinking how good it is. I'm thanking you, Angela, for how good it is. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thinking is not thinking. To think somebody, you got to open your... And you got to open it wide. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, so they didn't recognize his goodness. See, so God help us. How, how much time do you spend in worship, in praise, in thanking God for all he's given you? The days and weeks and months go by. Come on. Where you're not glorifying God, retaining God in your thinking, honoring Him for all He's done. See, they knew about me, he says, but wouldn't glorify me as God. I mean, what would happen if we started waking up in the mornings? Come on, oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for another day. Oh, I want to thank you this morning that I got breath. I want to thank you this morning for the joy. I want to thank you for the P. Oh, hallelujah. For the, I want to thank you for the victory. I praise you. I ble I'm on my way to heaven. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 
But instead, we get up complaining about gas prices. I filled up yesterday and was almost $150. But did I complain about it? I was just thanking God I had it. I was thinking, God, I had it. Come on, amen. Oh, and I didn't have to put it on a credit card. I, I, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I, I was thinking, God, that I had it. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. <laughs> Don't complain about the gas prices. Oh, I guess I got to get a job now. The government running, is running out. <laughs> Instead, of getting up and saying, I just thank you, God, I got a job. I got a brain. Come on, amen. I got a car. I got a safe place. I got a home. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm not walking. I didn't have to ride a horse to church this week. Come on. Thank you, God. <laughs> a great man of God by the name of Lester Summerall who was a missionary to the Philippines for many, many, many years. And at the age of 70, the Lord called him off the mission field and took him to Iowa. And he, at the age of seven, started working on a church. Started a church. And, of course, his church grew to where he had over 10,000 members. Just a great, great man of God. But I heard him say one time that he went to England to visit Smith Wigglesworth. And he said, I went to see Smith Wigglesworth. And he said, when I got there, I knocked on the door. And uh, Smith Wigglesworth opened the door. If you don't know who Smith Wigglesworth is, look him up. Ah. Oh, he was a great man of God. And he said, I said to Smith Wigglesworth, he said, can I come in? Smith Wigglesworth said, yeah. He said, you can come in by that paper you got under your arm, that newspaper. You got to put that down. I don't allow that to come into my house. That's what he said. That's what he said. And so he went into the house and they got talking about God and the things of God. And he said, listen, he said, can you just tell me? He said, I mean, he had great, 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 great miracles. I mean, I, I, super, super miracles Smith Wigglesworth had, you know, just raising folks from, I mean, just tremendous, tremendous ministry. And he said, can you just tell, can you just give me the secret? Just tell me the secret of how is it that God has used you in such a great way? He says, well, he said, when I get up, the first thing I do when my my feet hit the floor, I start dancing. And I spend the next 10 minutes just think, just dancing before the Lord. See, he chose. Come on, amen. See, he made a choice. Come on, hallelujah. He made a choice. Hallelujah. He didn't get up complaining about how expensive everything is. When the Lord said, I shall supply all of your needs. That's why I won't worry about the $150. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know God will supply all my needs. Why do I know that? Because I'm a sower. I'm a giver. I'm a sower. I'm like you. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Not just my tithe. Come on, amen. But my offerings. Someone says, well, bless God, I sow my tithe. Where's my return? Well, honey, sorry, I don't want to bust your bubble, but you don't get a return on your tithes. How can you get a return on somebody else's money? The 10% belongs to him. The tithe belongs to him. Well, wait a minute, Brother Frank. Listen, I, do, do I tithe on my gross or do I tithe on my net? How many of you know if you just tithe on your net, it is gross? <laughs> You'll get that in a little bit. Come on, hallelujah. When I, when I pastored, you know, when I'd pastor some dining, I'd go into the office on Monday, you know, and the secretaries would be in there counting the money. And I'd look over and, and I, I'd, I'd pick up a check and I'd see this check and it was like for uh, $53.42. I'm saying, huh? Why don't you just round it up? Be a rounder up. Come on, help me. Make it to $55. Come on, right? Round that thing up. <laughs> round it up. Man, it used to frustrate me. Make me mad. 50 
four dollars and thirty two cents. Oh, round it up to fifty. Be a rounder upper. <laughs> Can I have a witness in the house this morning? Right? See, only thing that the tithes does is rebuke the devourer. Yeah. For your sake. Come on. But what the offerings do. Ah, uh, come on now. Listen to me. 2020, with all the pandemic that we had, I went out four times. It was the greatest, biggest year Nathalie and I have ever had financially. My God. My God. I mean... Talk about checks in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. Whew, I'll have my Lord have mercy. But you know what we did? We had our last big three-day meeting. The first of weekend in March. And after that week, everything started closing down everywhere. I said to Nathan, I said, honey, get out the check and let's get out the checkbook and let's start sending out offerings. Amen. And we had some widow ladies that we knew in some of the churches. Some of them were pastor's wives. I said, come on, let's get their addresses. Let's send them checks. Let's send them an offering. Come on. We started sending out. And about three weeks, I finally said to God, I said, wait a minute. It looks like I got more going out than I am coming right in. Coming in. But then the first week of April, I went to the mailbox and opened it up. There was a little card in there. And this little card said, I just want to thank you from a doctor. A, a medical doctor. I just want to thank you for the message that you preached seven years ago in our church that changed my life forever. And there was a check and I flipped it over and it was for $5,000. <laughs> and that wasn't the only one he sent me that year. Are you hearing what I... Come, listen to me. Oh my God. But it began... Come on, amen. Because we started sowing seeds. seeds. That's how it began. And 2021 was greater than 2020. I can't wait to the end of this year. Are you, you don't hear what I'm saying. Come on, right? Oh, come on. Instead of complaining, hallelujah. I'm blessing God. I'm praising God. Come on, hallelujah. I'm not going to be like these folk here and stop giving God glory and praise. Hallelujah. You may not live in the house that you want to live in, but praise God, you got one. You may not be driving the car that you want to drive, but praise God, you got one. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, I wish somebody would help me preach this morning. Hallelujah. They glorified him not as God. That's huge. So I made up my mind I'm going to glorify him no matter what comes, no matter what the government does, or wars break out. Come on. You are my God, and I glorify you. Yes. Hallelujah. And it says, and neither were they thankful. When you live in an ungrateful society, it's easy to become ungrateful. Verse 22, almost through. Because when they knew and recognized him as God and did not honor him and glorify him as God or give him thanks, but instead they became futile and godless in their thinking. Vain imaginations, foolish reasoning, stupid speculations. This all took place because they stopped being grateful. My God. See, I'm here this morning not just because it's Sunday. I'm here to honor him this morning. Like you are. Come on, right? Verse 24, it says... No, verse, 20, verse, verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like the corruptible God and to birds and full-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator. Who is blessed forever. See, they begin to worship creation, to have idols. They open their minds to it. And, and what it brought about was a greater sin. For this cause, verse 26, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise the men, leaving the natural use of the woman... Burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves that recompense of their area, which was meat. Yes. Homosexuality is a sin. Yes. We don't hate the people. Come on, amen. 
Listen to me. It's a mindset. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's a mind. It's it's it, it, it's a mindset. <laughs> oh. Look what it says in verse twenty nine: being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, whisperers, backbiters. Haters of God. It sounds like he's talking to the church, don't it? <laughs> Backbiters. Uh, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedience to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same have pleasure in them that do them. I mean, God is trying to reach the church to show to us in this hour, don't compromise. I said, don't compromise. Watch your mind. Guard over your feelings. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen to me. I, 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 I don't want God to pour out revival. And then my wine skin burst. Come on, amen. And that new wine, oh, help me. That new, I lose all that new wine. Listen to me. Oh, oh because I, I, allow, I allow something to cause my, wind, my wine skin to not be able to be used by God. Listen, when we stop worshiping and giving thanks, we open our mind up to the enemy. And how many of you know this morning, he'll take... He'll take all the real estate you offer him. He'll take all the real estate that you offer him. But listen again. It's a serious thing when we go down through these verses and see how people get off. They stopped glorifying God. They stopped thanking Him. And then they started doing weird things. Oh, God, help us in this hour. Help us as a church. Help us as a church in this hour. Oh, help us, God, to gird up the, the loins, those those loose dangling thoughts that if we're not careful will lead us down a dark 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 road and I submit to you I honestly believe that that's where we're at in this hour we're being bombarded by everything that this culture can throw at you No, I'm not going to call my boy a girl. He ain't a girl. He's a boy. I said, he's a boy. And you can put as many puberty proper uh, blockers as you want to. I'm telling you, it is not going to change what God created them to be. I'm telling you, we got a government that is sick in this house. And if we don't guard our minds, renew our minds, not just on Sunday morning, but daily, weekly, monthly, if we're not careful, listen, we have to disengage. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we're what? In this. But we're what? Not of the world. I'm in this world, but I am not of the world. I, I don't blame the conditions of our nation necessarily upon the Democrats or the Republicans. Whew. 
Because the truth is, the government can never fix what needs to fix. Only the kingdom of God. Come, are you hearing what I'm saying? What is the kingdom? Righteousness and peace and joy and all. So I made up my mind. Listen to me. I have made up my mind. There is not anything. Come on, amen. Going to hinder my flow. I said going to hinder my peace. Going to hinder my, are you here? Hinder my joy. The only thing that can save America, are you here, is God. Only thing that can save you and save your family and save your life is God. I don't care which party is in. Though I do prefer one party above the other party. I just got to be honest about that. I cannot agree with the party that believes in killing the babies. I cannot agree with the party that believes at eight years old, a child gets to decide whether they want to be a male or a female. I cannot go along with that party. I am sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> You're right, Ellis. <laughs> I cannot stand in agreement with that party whose number one goal I believe is to destroy this nation as we have known America even with all of our problems we've had I, I didn't can I say this in love I didn't need the school nor the government to teach me about the races. I didn't need them to teach me about where one is better than the other. Because when I was in India and Vietnam, in that foxhole, you didn't care whether they were black or white or brown. Or, are you hearing what I mean? You just didn't care. You did not care at all. God help us. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning, Lord. Oh, we praise you this morning, God. Oh, we give you honor and we give you praise, oh, God. I thank you for Jubilee this morning. I, I thank you for Pastor Ellis and Sister Maria. I thank you, oh, Lord God, that I I've known all these years how their hearts run after you, O oh Lord. And I thank you, O oh God, for a people that are here this morning that are running after you, O oh Lord God. Seeking you, O oh Lord God. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these other things. Lord, add it unto you. <laughs> Can I say just... I got a call, actually a text this week. Just before we left, we had to have some work done on our RV. And I mean, we were splitting it right down to the very last minute that we got ready to leave. And so I had to have a plumbing company to come out and work on it. And I got a text from the owner this week from the text after, after that and wanted to know uh, uh, what address and see me Am I thinking? I was thinking the bill. And so I just texted her back and, uh, and I just, to the secretary and I said, listen, just, you know, just whatever it is, just take a picture of it or text me and I'll send you a check. And immediately I got a text back that says, no, we won't, we were not wanting to know where to send you a bill. We wanted to know where to send you a check. <laughs> Father, we thank you this morning, God. God, we thank you this morning. Oh, God, we thank you this morning, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We bless your name this morning, God. Oh, God. Oh, we thank you. Oh, I just thought about that. I, I'm sorry. I just had to mention that. Talk about checks in the mail. Whoa, thank you, Lord. Oh, God, thank you for this great house this morning, Lord. Thank you for these awesome people, Lord. Your people, God, who love you. Who are running after you this morning, Lord. We know that. We sense that. We feel that. We know that that's the spirit of the leadership that has been imparted into this congregation. 
thank you this morning, Lord. And we ask you, God, right now, Lord, if there are those we need to make adjustments in the way we've been, the way we've been thinking. Oh, God, there's areas in our life, oh, Lord God. Oh, Father. Those things that are dangling, oh Lord God. Those thoughts that we haven't gathered up like we should this morning, God. Help us this morning, Lord. Yes. Oh God, help us. Help us, oh God. Help us this morning, Jesus. Oh God. As a man thinks, so is he in his heart. change how we live is to change the way we think. Crying out to God to help us. Oh God this morning help us Jesus. I wonder real quickly while the spirit in the presence of the Lord is just whew, so, so awesome and so powerful. I wonder real quickly Maybe you would say, Brother Frank, I, I've been in a struggle. I, I've really been in some warfare. I've been in a battle. My, oh, my mind is just, oh, I need help this morning. I, I need a fresh touch from God this morning. I, I, I need God this morning to... Gird up the loins of my mind. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. I've got some attitudes. Oh God. Oh Father God. Some attitudes and habits. Oh God. I want out of my life. I want out of my way of thinking, God. Oh, Father. I want the rest of 2022 to be different than the than the first, first seven months. I want to go into this new month, this 14th day. Incidentally, the number 14th in Scripture is the number for salvation, for deliverance. Ah. The number eight is the number, come on, amen, or then, you know, it's the number for new beginning. So I'm just saying to you this morning, come on, you can have a new beginning. Hallelujah. Oh, deliverance in Jesus' name this morning. So real quickly, if that's you this morning, would you raise your hand and would you say, Brother Frank, would you pray for me this morning? I, 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 I need, I have some areas. I need God. Thank you for that hand this morning. Thank you for that hand this morning. Thank you for that hand, for that hand this morning. We thank you, God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. We bless, come on. I'm tearing. I don't usually tear this long, but I'm just tearing just a little bit longer because I, I feel like, come on, that, yeah, thank God for that hand. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need to make some readjustments. I need to make some adjustments in my way of thinking. I, oh, I, I need to become sharp in my mind again. I, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. I, oh, I haven't been reading like I should have been reading. Praying like I should have been praying. Oh, help us this morning. Help us this morning. Oh, I'm telling you this morning. Oh, I'm telling you. It's going to get worse before it gets any better. Because remember, he says, remember what, remember what he said, what he prophesied in Daniel chapter 7? He said, there's going to be those, come on, man, that, that are going to be worn out by the world system. But then he didn't stop there. He said, then there's going to be those that are going to be strong. Yes. Those that know their God. Oh, yeah, are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm talking to somebody this morning. 
God don't want you to be weak. God wants you to be stronger than you've ever been. You that raised your hand real quickly. Real quickly. Real quickly. You that raised your hand. We want to pray we did this morning. I want you to stand to your feet real quickly. Those of you that raised your hand. Yes, thank you, God. Just make your way down to the altar real quickly. Just make your way down to the front this morning. Come on, honey. I need, come on, honey. Help me pray. Come on, we, come on. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord God. Oh, my God. This morning, Oh, my God. This morning, hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> 